I mean, why do actually, <laughs> I've got five projects in, in CTV at the moment. I have no idea why they're there, except that there's nowhere to go with them, you know? Right. And they're, they're nothing like any of them. So, so what do you have at CTV? Not just a bunch of ideas. Before they get to a first draft or before they oh, get no, to a pilot? Well, or that's just what we concept? learned. We just write, I would write the script now. It's, it's worth me to just write the script so that the, I, so that the discussion is concrete. Right. No pitch, like, oh, you know, you go in and say, oh, I got this great idea about a mountain climber. You just go, well, here's the script. This is what we thought we'd be. So we're having to, at least having the discussion about it. Now, when we start, I started doing that a while ago, and it was unusual. And they thought, well, you just wrote this on spec. I thought, well, it was worth it to me to make, you know, to have this concrete discussion so we're not kidding each other. And then since that, that time, the last couple of years, more and more people are doing that, apparently. Even in the States, they're just going, this is it. Not the bullshit that I'm going to talk to you about, you know, I'm going to make it up. I went to the, actually this is Wonderland, I got, I did that. I came up with that idea at a pitch meeting about something else, you know, I was talking about that. But that's, George, this is Wonderland is a little different because it's for a public broadcast. Well, it was a public broadcast. Was it a was a public broadcast. broadcast. This is 2012. It was a public broadcast. <laughs> it was a public broadcast. Instead of being a sort of a bipolar place that is now. Right. Um, but that is a public broadcaster, which is under, in theory, under a different set of uh, mandates or ideas. But let's just talk about the commercial broadcasters mm -hmm. a bit more. And first, I want to know why we aren't pushing back against the kind of suppression and driving. Well, I'd love formula. them to do that. I'd love producers to get but together and say that. I there know. you are talking to Christina Shipman in in Shipton in uh, at Global, yeah. and there's an, a producer of drama for a commercial network, yeah. and there's a playwright, writer called George Walker. Yeah. So they're the two opposite sides of the fence. So how does that dialogue happen? Well, I mean, she said to me, I really would like you to come work in this network. I would love, like to, I'd love to be able to say you're working here. And then basically everything else was about not making, not letting me be me. She wanted me to be what they would want, someone who would reproduce American television. I, well, this is my take on it, you know, just, it was just be like, because none of the, she wanted the sort of the reputation, whatever that was, but not really, not really the work, you know. But she's a smart woman, so well, what do you when mean you push smart? <laughs> you know I mean? She went to university. <laughs> yeah, she's, you know, she's not a dummy, but she also wants to keep her job, you know, so that's not what they do there. So you're saying Christine Shipton is she's not being determined by... She's, there are, she's got bosses too, you know. And, and, and so that, when you pushed back or suggested maybe that wasn't appropriate that you actually be George Walker when you write rather than a television else. version yeah, of yeah. GW, what did she say? Get another writer, she said to the producer. That, That's, all, that flatly? Basically. They, we can't work with him on this project. He, we, can't, we can't work with him. He won't be that person that we need to. How it usually works is like, uh, and you, you, they, uh, so I had a friend who was working on a show, so he writes uh, an outline. The outline goes to the showrunner, the showrunner gives him notes. In the meantime, it's gone off to all the producers and the people at the network. He gets a whole bunch of notes from the network. He gets, gives them to the writer. The writer's got to incorporate all those things in the outline. I have a problem with outlines, first of all. I mean, that's my problem. I said right there, let alone all that stuff coming back at you. Because when you have an outline that goes from the beginning right to the end, who wants to write the script to do that, you know? I'm bored already. It's that the, the process of discovery is gone, you know? So you have a basic notion of what the thing is going to be, but then you write it. You actually write it. So I'm in, I'm right outside the kind of like the, the way it works right away. So, and, and when we're working at TMN, I was working at TMN, you said, we don't do that. Um, the big, that was the first one. We almost didn't go to TMN because, well, here's how we do it. We, we have outlines, we get everything. All 13 episodes will be outlined first. And then we'll give you notes on that, and then you go to script. And I said, well, do you want the, do you want the best way I do it, or the way you want me to do it? <laughs> it seems to me that some, you want the best work, or you want just the way you like to work? And they actually heard that at TMN. They said, oh, no, we want your best work. And I said, well, the best work is not that. We'll go write the script. I mean, we'll have, uh, internally, the writers and I will have our own internal outline, which is not fit for anyone else to look at it, it's sloppy and it's full of questions and stuff, but it's got a very sick day, and we'll deliver you a script, and then we'll talk about it. And I said, in the long run, it will save you a lot of work. You know, we won't have to go through all those things. We'll just give it to you, and you won't see it until we're happy with it, and then your notes will be needed, because we'll need an outside eye. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying this all because I came from theater, and I'm used to having my own way, blah, blah, blah. I'm saying it because I think this is the best way to do it. For us, me. So, uh, let me paraphrase if I may. You, mm. you are telling me that in the commercial system, and excuse me if I go too far and correct me, 
that the writer's at the bottom of the ladder, that every layer above him, from presidents to vice presidents to marketing to executive producers to producers to all deliver notes down to what they want the guy on the bottom rung, the writer, to do. So I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> having never actually submitted myself to this process, uh, but having only heard that this is about to happen, and I have heard it from other writers, for sure, and I've even heard networks say things to writers like, don't make it too bad, don't make it too funny, don't make the banter too sharp, just make it banter. That's not what we're turning in. We're turning What's in to the see, reason for that, George? They're turning in, tuning in to see beautiful young people have sex. In uniforms, in doctor's uniforms, in police uniforms, that's what they think. They're turning into, tuning in to look at beautiful young people. That's basically it. That's all they want. Now, I'm the whole, it only takes one or two people to change this whole thing, you know, to go like, well, I'd like to see something better. Oh, I just saw this show on BBC, and I think we can do that. But I'm constantly watching British shows in particular saying, and I look at the faces, I say, you would never make it on North American television. They would never put that face, especially women, the real woman's face, they would never put that face on North American television. It just, it, and yet, it's so engaging when you see real people doing that stuff, you know? And, uh, and then you go, that's how far we gotta go. I mean, uh, when we st started doing TV, I mean, and I was working with really great crews, but a lot of them, though, had only done American stuff. And the time I had to spend telling the makeup and hair people to leave the women alone, you know? Get your hands off them, they look fine, you know? To, to the gussing, the fussing, the messing, the everything. Yeah, always, you know, too much light in that hair. And, uh, I mean, I remember saying, and um, in This Is Wonderland, even, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kara Pivko was the lead, and a really wonderful looking woman, and, uh, but we had a couple of other really great looking women in the show. They're all great looking to me, and they were always trying to ugly them up, because they didn't want them to look better than Kara. I said, well, she doesn't care. It's ridiculous. <laughs> what are you doing? There's a the thing where the lead has to look better. Not much that she can have to act better, she actually has to look better. So that's all wrong, right? It's all corrupt and wrong and ugly. And it's just the opposite of how I think actors should be treated. But what do we do, George? Because that's the role that we're being shot down. Well, we got to fight light back. Speed. You got to get people, back? you got to get producers, these producers, to fight back. They're so afraid of anything. You know, they're so. So it is fear. Yeah, it's totally fear, fear, you know, and yet, this, and yet they're needed unless the CRTC totally turns its back on Canadian work and says, we don't give a shit if you do it or not. If they've got someone there and says, you have to do this stuff, your licensee says you have to do this, then the producers can rise up and say, yes, yes, <laughs> let's start doing some stuff. Stop asking us to just do this stuff. But yes. because there are enough, oh, 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 sorry. my Asian just used to call them whores, but uh, <laughs> like there are enough people who will do anything for money at any time. Uh, we'll get to the factory theater in a minute, I assume. And uh, you, they'll have no trouble getting some producers. But if the majority of people said, you know, we want to try. I heard, um, I guess I can name specific things. I heard, uh, I don't hear much that excites me in, in Canadian television, but I heard that there's some guys, some good writers, some good producers that are going to do a show called Borealis. I don't know if you heard about that. It was for sci-fi. CBC or CTV? Or? It was a CTV space for space, their space network. Yeah. Now here's what the idea was, it's the north, it's the Arctic in the future, and it's sort of like a deadwood in the future, it's open territory, it's because of global warming, it's, and it's still kind of the last, last frontier, and they're up there, and everyone's fighting over it, they're fighting over the mineral rights, it's like a, a settlement, the Americans are there, the Russians are there, it's, it sounds great to me, because it's, it's actually going to happen, you know, that's actually going to happen, it's going to be where all these cultures come together fighting for all this stuff up there. And they did this thing, apparently, and uh, they did a pilot, and, and, uh, and they're not going to do the series, you know, because they decided at the last minute that space is going to be skewed towards women. This guy, you know, all of a sudden women are big sci-fi fans, for whatever that means, but even if they are... Oh, you mean as an audience? As, as an consumer, audience, yeah. Right. So even if they were, it doesn't mean they wouldn't find this interesting. It's just, just interesting. So some marketing person put some in that guy's head at the top, and uh, so they just killed it. And it's great, you know, I saw, I saw it, I saw it because I know the producer, I saw it, and it's really good. And who were the writers, do you know? Andrew Bears, and Andrew's one, and Andrew, there are two Andrews, I think. But anyway, the writing's really good, the acting's really good, it's a terrific story, and it's, we're not going to see it. Oh, I think so, they might put the movie on, but no. 